Hello and welcome to my channel Joe Loves Linux and if you also love Linux this is the right channel for you. Today I want to talk a little bit about Ubuntu 22.10 just released uh, last week and it's called Kinetic Kudu and here it is. A wonderful background here. I like the wallpaper I have to say but there are more things uh, that are new in this short-term supported release of Ubuntu. It's supported for nine months. I don't want to go too deep into the whole system. I just want to point out what's new in Ubuntu 22.10. So let's see. Let's go to the quick settings. They are at the right top and you can see there are some shortcuts. Here you have a button uh, to switch into dark mode or you have a button for the night light. You also have a button for internet connection. In my case I'm wired but if you have a Wi-Fi connection you have the option to choose the right one and to type in your password. You also have a button for the settings and a button for a screenshot tool. This is nice. I always like shortcuts on the desktop. So it's much easier and much faster to use. Next thing, let's open the file manager here. As Ubuntu 22.10 uses GNOME 43 we got an adaptive file manager and what does that mean? Before I talk too much I will show you. Look what happens now. If you resize the window the list at the left disappears. And this is what the word adaptive means. If you like my content please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumb. And if you're interested in Ubuntu 2204, the LTS version, please check out my video here on my channel. Thank you very much. Now let's go to the settings because there are some things that are new and I think very good. The first thing is under the hood. Ubuntu 22.10 no more uses Pulse Audio that's new. Instead it uses Pipewire. For many reasons this is a much better tool than Pulse Audio ever was. But it is more for advanced users. If you only start a YouTube video or your mp3 file you will not see any difference and that's good. But if you work with a digital audio workstation you will notice the difference because Pipewire makes the handling of audio signals much easier in this case. Let's go to multitasking and here you see we have hot corners and active screen edges. You can activate that or not just as you like. I don't like hot corners very much and they are disabled by default and uh, active screen edges are enabled. This is kind of of tiling and I say kind of. We have dynamic workspaces or a fixed number of workspaces and if you use multi monitors you can decide if you want to have the workspaces on the primary display only or on all displays. In appearance you can switch to the dark mode and you can choose another accent color. And we have a nice selection of wallpapers I have to say. And here you see also the Kinetic Kudu and here also not many wallpapers but they are well designed. Did you know that I wrote a book about Ubuntu 2204? It's available on Amazon and you can find the link in the show notes. Now let's open a terminal and let's see what HTOP tells us. HTOP is not pre-installed. I had to install it afterwards. This is my first choice to check the system. Here we have 925 megs. It is how I would expect it for GNOME. GNOME is very heavy but I think this does not make any difference anymore unless you have a weak computer. I use GNOME with Debian and it's almost the same. This does not depend 
if you use Debian or Ubuntu or Arch or Fedora, GNOME is always the same. I heard that there is some Ubuntu Pro ad in the terminal and this should uh, appear if you try to upgrade the system in the terminal. I tried that but the, the line with the ad does not appear on my system here. Don't know if this because I use um, a live system. As you can see Ubuntu 22.10 is not installed here in my VM. It's just a live system and maybe they don't use the Ubuntu Pro ad in the terminal in the live system. I don't know. There was a little bit of anger in the Ubuntu community. Honestly, I don't understand why this is such a great problem. Ubuntu Pro is free for uh, five computers, if I understand this right. And they only mention that this is a possibility to use. Who cares? But to be honest, this does not matter to me very much because I'm a Debian user and so it's not my business to talk about if Ubuntu got a Ubuntu Pro ad in the terminal or not. Is this evil? Well, I would say no. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. One thing I should mention if we talk about Ubuntu 22.10 well, this is the flagship with GNOME Desktop, but there are also many flavors of Ubuntu. And what's new here is that we have a flavor of Ubuntu with Unity Desktop again. And that was a surprise for me. Maybe there are many users who like Ubuntu Unity. Many users didn't understand why Ubuntu stopped with Ubuntu Unity as a flagship. And instead of that, they are using GNOME until today. And there was a very active community who wanted to bring back Unity. And there were always respins of Ubuntu Unity and now it's official again. And that's a great step for all who love Ubuntu with the Unity desktop. So if you are still here, thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumb and leave a comment here. I would appreciate that very much. Thank you and bye-bye.